So when you go to uncountable sample spaces, life is not very easy, right? That is why you need all the machinery of measure theory, okay? Otherwise, if, if, if uncountable sample spaces were as simple, probability theory would be very easy, right? There is nothing more to it. All this technical machinery of measures and the sigma algebras will be not very, uh, not very necessary, right? Shall we move on to uncountable sample spaces? There are no questions on discrete sample spaces. So let us take an example. So let us take an example of let us say omega equal to the interval 0, 1. Okay. So you want to deal with this sample space. So you have this interval. Okay. And let us say you are interested, let us take a very specific example. Let us say you are throwing darts on this line. Okay. Throwing a dart on this line, it will it will land somewhere in this line. And you want to model mathematically the intuitive concept of the dart landing uniformly on this 0, 1 interval. Okay. So, you want to have the sense that the dart is equally likely to hit anywhere between 0 and 1. Okay. That is the intuitive thing we want to build up towards. Okay. <coughs> so, in some sense, I want to be able to say that if I have some set here, which I am interested in probability of the dart landing on that set and I move that set around here, the probability of landing on that set should also be the same, right. So in this, this is the experiment we want to model, let us say. So essentially in more formal terms, we want to assign a uniform probability measure on this 0, 1 interval. Okay, which is an uncountable, we know that 0, 1 is uncountable, right? the interval 0, 1 is uncountable. Now in this case, it so happens that if you take 2 power 0, 1, 2 power omega, which is the set of all possible subsets of the 0, 1 interval, it is a very huge collection of sets. It is actually you can show that 2 power omega has a strictly bigger cardinality than even the continuum, the real numbers. Okay. In fact, you can the Cantor showed the theorem that all power sets have the power set of any set has a strictly bigger cardinality than the set itself. Okay. So, 2 power omega will have a strictly bigger cardinality than real numbers or 0, 1. Okay. So, that is too big a sigma algebra to assign probabilities to. In fact, there is an impossibility result that I will state. But that gives that brings us to the problem that you cannot assign probabilities to all subsets of the 0, 1 interval, right. So, uh, one, see the elementary approach of simply assigning probabilities to singletons will definitely not work because I mean if you were to assign each probability, so let us say there is an omega here, okay, between 0 and 1. If you want to assign probability to that little omega, uh, well, it cannot be anything positive because if you were to put a positive probability on that singleton little omega, you would want to put the same probability on another singleton because you want the notion of a uniform probability measure. But then you will quickly find that there is an un uncountable infinity of these omegas and if any of them has positive probability, the probability of the interval will blow up, right? it will go to infinity that is meaningless. So, the only thing you can do is the singleton should have 0 probability, right? That is the only way to make it work. But if you put 0 probability on the singletons, 
that does not tell you the probability of an uncountable set. Right, suppose I put probability of 0 on all the singletons and I ask you what is the probability of the interval half 1. This has uncountably many singletons in it, right, but you cannot add probabilities over uncountable unions, you can only add them over countable unions, right. So, even if I assign 0 probability to each of these singletons, I am not able to figure out what the probability of let us say an interval half 1 is, right, because I have to add the probabilities of these, I mean I cannot add the probabilities of these uncountably infinite sets, unions, right, okay. So, this is a problem. <coughs> so, the way out of this is to not stop worrying about singletons. The idea is to directly assign probabilities to sets we consider interesting, subsets of omega we consider interesting. Okay. So, abandon singletons altogether for un uncountable sample spaces. We will only say that for example, intuitively we would like to say that the probability of my dart landing in this interval half 1 should be what? 1 by 2, I want it, right? that is that's, that's what I want. So, similarly if I have some interval A, B or something, I want the probability of the dart landing there should be B minus A, right? that is what I want right, but of course I have to define the proper sigma algebra and so on and assign the measures properly. So, this requires some work, okay. this stumped a lot of mathematicians for a few centuries, okay. it was only sorted out in early 1900s by Borel, Lebeg and all. Right? So, this is all this business is only 100 years old, okay. people have been studying probability for several centuries, but this, this proper theory, uh, consistent mathematical theory, particularly for uncountable sample spaces, is only 100 years old. Okay. So, okay. <coughs> so, we want this. So, we want a measure, right, So, we want the measure of the whole thing is 1 of course, but then we want measures of let us say intervals like that a b to be b minus a and so even if I move it around I want it to be equal to the length right. So, this is what we want want. So, I want to put a measure mu or probability measure p such that mu of the interval a b equal to mu of interval a b equal to mu of a b equal to mu of a b closed all of this equal to I want it to be proportional to b minus a right. So, this what am I saying here? I am just saying that the dart landing in open AB or closed JB or half open half closed is all equal to, they are all equal, right? Because I want to, I do not want to say that a dart landing, a dart landing at some point that, that should be probability 0, right, as I just argued. I want this property, okay, and I want the property of translational invariance. Uh, so, if I have uh, A which is a subset of 0, 1. So, if I give you a subset of 0, 1, right, I want my measure mu. So, the I am trying to define a uniform measure mu satisfying certain properties. One of them is translational invariance. I want mu of A equal to mu of a plus x, where a plus x is the set of all little a plus x. 
such that a belongs to a and a plus x is now equal to 1. Union a plus x minus 1 is that a belongs to a and a plus x greater than 1. So, this is complicated notation for something very simple, I will tell you what it is. So, this a o plus this uh, o plus x is simply the translation of the set by uh, some fixed number x. So, if I give you a set some set and I move it by x, okay, that is what this is saying except if you move a set by a certain x, it can go outside 1. In that case, you wrap it back. Okay, that is what this business is doing. So, if your a plus x is less than or equal to 1, uh, you are happy. If not, you wrap it back, right? You subtract 1 and bring it back here, right? So, this is the translational invariant property, invariance property. So, I want my uniform measure to satisfy these two properties, okay? This is the, I want a measure which satisfies these properties. Right, uniform measure to satisfy these properties. Okay. So I am demanding that my intervals have a measure, right? A B intervals of the form A B have a measure, and that open or closed should not matter, the measure should be the same. And I, I also demand that for any subset A, not necessarily intervals, it, it must have the translational invariance property. If I demand these two things, which is perfectly reasonable for a uniform measure, it turns out you cannot do this on 2 power omega. Okay? There is an impossibility theorem. So, there is an impossibility result. So, this is something I will only state. Uh, the proof of it is uh, beyond the scope of our class. I will not hold you responsible for it. I will only state what it says. Okay? It simply states that there exists no such measure on 2 power omega. Okay? There does not exist a definition. Of so okay, I should say there does not exist a measure. There does not exist a measure mu a defined on two power omega, i.e., all sets of all subsets of 0 satisfying one and two above okay so this is a this is a theorem that's proved. For example, Rosenthal has a proof of this. The book by Rosenthal has a proof of this. But the proof proof is by contradiction. You assume that there exists a measure on uh, two power omega and construct and show that one of the axioms of the measures will not hold. Okay, so it's a proof by contradiction. But it's it's not uh, very important for us. So what is important for us is to simply know that you cannot these very perfectly intuitive properties that you like uniform measure to satisfy cannot be satisfied on 2 power omega. You cannot possibly assign measures to all subsets of 0, 1 satisfying the axioms of measure and satisfying these two properties. So, in plain English, it is impossible to assign a uniform probability measure on 0, 1 satisfying some very simple properties like this, say very intuitive properties. See, there are other impossibility results as well. There are other impossibility results that say that this is only talking about a uniform measure, right? 
So, there are certain large class of continuous measures which can never be defined on uh, uncountable on 2 power omega ok. So, all this just means that we have to what should we what we have to do now? We have to compromise on our sigma algebra right. So, we, we could very happily take 2 power omega as our sigma algebra for discrete probability spaces, but when omega is uncountable 2 power omega is a luxury we cannot afford right. So, we have to work with a smaller sigma algebra, but still we have to figure out a way of retaining subsets that are of interest to us right. So, I, I will get to the details next class, but what essentially uh, these uh, early pe pe people who developed the foundations of measure theory what they did is that I want to keep interesting subsets, I cannot keep all subsets. So, I have to keep interesting subsets. So, if you take a real line or 0 1 interval or something like that, people decided that the interesting subsets are the intervals ok. So, I want to keep a smaller sigma algebra than 2 power omega. So, I want to create a sigma algebra that is smaller than 2 power omega, but contains all the intervals ok, intervals of the form a b right. And so, you decide to include your intervals in your sigma algebra. So, now you include intervals you also have to include complements, countable union of intervals and so on right. So, that is what led to this concept of a Borel sigma algebra and the sigma algebra the elements of the sigma algebra are called Borel sets ok. That is the word you might have heard right. So, sounds familiar to some yeah. So, that is so Borel sets are interesting subsets of 0 1 interval for example. Uh, so, they Borel sets intervals are all Borel sets and all countable unions and countable intersections and complementations of intervals also are Borel sets ok. So, that is what we will build up towards next class we will deal with this more formally ok. So, are there any questions at this point? So, I will stop with the impossibility result for today. Uh, so, we will prove that singleton sets are Borel sets ok. So, I have not got into it yet that is the result we will prove ok. Thanks.